Hello, I'm Erin Jade Lang. I am the author of four published books for young adults, and my stories are mostly set in the real world, so it's important that my characters be relatable to real readers like you. This is partly achieved through voice, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. What is voice and how do we get it? When I published my first book, a lot of critics and readers kindly praised the voice in my writing. And I thought, awesome, I have voice. What is that? So I did my research and quickly learned that voice is something writers and other creative types like to talk about, but no one really likes to define. And that's because it's not easy to define. For example, here's how Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines voice. A sound produced by vertebrates by means of lungs, larynx, or syrinx, especially sound so produced by human beings. And then there's a few other definitions here, but I think it's safe to say that is not what we mean when we are talking about voice in writing. So I decided to look into a few literary resources and see what their definition of voice is. On masterclass.com, love masterclass, uh, they define voice in this way. In literature, voice refers to the rhetorical mixture of vocabulary, tone, point of view, and syntax that makes phrases, sentences, and paragraphs flow in a particular manner. Okay, that's still a little dictionary sounding, but it sounds more accurate. Now on literaryterms.net, they simplify it even further. In literature, the voice expresses the narrator and or author's emotions, attitude, tone, and point of view through artful, well thought out use of word choice and diction. Okay, so I kind of like that one. I, I think that one's a pretty accurate definition, but what's hard is that it's still really broad and high level. Even if it's a good definition, I don't think that we would be able to, uh, based on this alone, be able to say with certainty whether a book or a piece of writing had voice. In fact, it's so hard to define voice that many writers, editors, and other people in the publishing world will tell you they can't define voice, but they know it when they see it. So I think it's a little easier to give examples. I have a couple of opening lines of books that I believe are rich with voice. Here's the first one. The first thing you find out when your dog learns to talk is that dogs don't got nothing much to say. This is from The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. It's a movie now, you may have recently seen it. Uh, this is a pretty extreme example of voice beyond the don't got nothing. Uh, the author Patrick Ness even uses spelling to show voice, spelling your dog, Y-E-R dog. Normally that's a no-no, but like any writing rule, you can break it if you break it really, really well. And I think Patrick Ness does do that in this book because he, he uses breaking the rules uh, to help lead to the voice of his characters. Uh, my second example is, we went to the moon to have fun, but the moon turned out to completely suck. Uh, this line is from one of my favorite books, Feed by M.T. Anderson. <clears throat> this is a more subtle example of voice, but how old does this narrator sound to you? Is he happy, bored? Sounds to me like he's a teenager and he's probably kind of disenchanted and not easily impressed, right? Well, that's pretty much who this character is throughout the entire book, starting with line one, page one. And that's a really great example there. Now I have another one that's uh, from a slightly younger book. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. And of course, this is the opening line of the first book in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. Uh, this is interesting because this is an example of a third person narrator. It's a little harder to do voice when you're not speaking from the point of view of your main character, but from a narrator's point of view talking about the characters. But clearly it could be done, so that's why I pulled this example from you. Um, so J.K. Rowling could have written very simply, the Dursleys lived at number four Privet Drive. They were very normal people and they were proud of that fact. That would give us the same basic information, but the way she wrote it lets us know even more that not only are the Dursleys normal and proud of it, 
but they might be a little bit uppity. Thank you very much. So I love that example. Uh, so now I want us to try it. We're gonna do an exercise. We're gonna start with like a really boring line with some basic information and we're gonna give it voice. You will need a paper and a pen or pencil for this exercise. Okay, on your screen, you will see on the left, I've come up with a list of five characters. A grumpy old man, an angry teenager, a talkative little girl, a popular cheerleader, and a stressed out mom. Now on the right side, you'll see a pretty boring sentence. I think people sometimes change facts or even lie to themselves when the truth makes them look bad or feel guilty. That's an interesting thought, but kind of boring the way it's written. So the exercise is I want you to pick two or three of the five characters on the left and rewrite that kind of boring sentence with voice. Use uh, different words to get the same idea across. So I've given you an example here so you can see what I mean. A grumpy old man might say this in a different way. He might say, people can't be trusted to recollect with accuracy when those recollections make them look like damn fools. Not exactly the same thought, but kind of the same intention. So that should give you an idea of what we're going for. So we're gonna take five minutes to work on those sentences. Remember, pick two or three characters and rewrite the same sentence in those voices. And then we'll come back together and we'll have five minutes of sharing. Okay, now that you have your sentences, I'm going to have you break into pairs or small groups, whatever works best for your current learning setup. And I'd like you to take turns sharing your sentences. Don't say which character it is because I want your partner or group to guess. If you are not able to gather with a partner or group, use these five minutes to draft sentences for your remaining characters, the ones you didn't choose before. All right, hopefully you had some great sentences and were able to guess each other's characters. So I have one more to share with you. I guess I wasn't surprised that someone had turned the story around, whatever they had to tell themselves in order to look in the mirror every day. That was my way of articulating the thought in the voice of Butter. He is an angry teenager and he is the main character of my first book, also titled Buttle, Butter. And it, this is actually a line in the book. So you should starting to, uh, be starting to understand what it means when people say about voice, we know it when we see it. If you want to practice, practice the exercise we just did on your own time in more depth, try coming up with your own list of characters and write a paragraph, a whole paragraph, not just a sentence. And it can be any paragraph. Maybe it's something you've even already written. And then rewrite that paragraph using the characters that we've come up with or uh, new characters of your own. Afterward, compare the voices and ask yourself, is each character's voice as interesting and animated and engaging as the others? If not, then it's probably a matter of developing that character a little bit more, figuring out what makes them worthy of being a character in a book or a story. Once you know your characters, you can climb inside of their skin and think and talk like them, and then you'll be able to let them tell their story. Because it's your awesome plot idea, but it's their story, and they have to be the ones to tell it. So speaking of plot, uh, a lot of folks uh, start with plots. If you're a writer, you might have an awesome idea for a short story or a book, and you know everything that happens in the story but you aren't sure who the characters are yet, or maybe you're still developing them. Now I'm the opposite. I start with characters and struggle to wrap a plot around them. But if you're someone who tends to have your story first, then you might need a little help finding voice for the characters within that story. To get to that character, to the who, you may need to first figure out the what, when, where, why. So go ahead and write those five words down on a piece of paper, just in the order I have them here, and leave space to write something after each word. In this next exercise, I'm going to ask you to fill in these five W's, starting with where. Think of a setting like a waterfall or an alien planet. Write that under where. Next, when. Come up with a time period. Is it present day, distant future, a specific time in the past? And write that down. Now, don't worry if you're not coming up with stuff that quickly. I'm going to give you time for that. I just want to share some ideas first to get your creativity going. 
So moving on to what? Think of an event, a, a brief event, like someone running for some, from someone or hiding or daydreaming or taking a test. Any little activity you can think of, that's your what. Now think of why. How did that character get there? Are they in trouble? And then finally, who? Now you might have an idea who your character could be. A criminal, a hero, an athlete, maybe even an animal or an alien. But your where, when, what, and why should help you define that who. So that's going to be part of the exercise. And then the final part of the exercise is after you fill in your where, when, what, why, and finally your who, your character, I want you to think about how that character might say one of these lines and then rewrite it in their voice. I don't trust anyone. No one scares me. I'll never fall in love. Any one of those, those three sentences or all of them if you have time. But start with filling in those blanks and then go from there. You have five minutes for this exercise. Okay, I hope that exercise got you thinking about character and how to develop voice, even if you are starting from a plot and need to create characters within a given setting and circumstance. Now, voice isn't just for storytelling. It's in all kinds of writing and even in creative ventures beyond writing. If you are writing nonfiction, like a college essay, you want to make sure your voice and your personality come through. But it's hard sometimes when you're trying to sound all smart and serious. So think of yourself as a character. Think of what's made you who you are and the phrases you use most and make sure that it comes through in your writing. I promise that you can be interesting and academic at the same time. Now, if you're not a writer, but another kind of artist, look at your work and ask if you see yourself in it or if it tells a story of its own. The best visual artists, artists are defined by periods they go through. I think that's just another way of expressing their voice at a different place in a different time. So whether you are using these writing exercises or not, when you're creating anything, you should be asking yourself, what am I trying to say? How do I want to express it? That expression of what you're trying to say, the way you are expressing it, is your voice. So I hope this has given you a little better understanding of voice and that you all had a little fun as well. Now, if you'd like to know more about me or my books, visit me online at erinjadelang.com and on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of my social handles are Erin Jade Lang. Thank you so much for your time and your creative energy today.